Hi, this is Joel Persinger. I'm the Gun Guy. Thank you very much for watching my channel. I really, deeply do appreciate the fact that you do. I'm going to show you a gun today that has been on my Gee, I Want One of Those list for a really long, long time. I bet you have a list like that too. And one of the guns on my Gee, I Want One of Those lists happens to be a Browning High Power. Now, they've been made for a long time. This is an older one, and it's possible that this might be a Nazi high power. It's been nickeled, and that was very common. You see these old guns, and somebody nickeled them because they thought it looked cool. And unfortunately, in doing so, they cover up a lot of the marks and proof marks and stuff that you want to be able to see. And that's kind of the case here. I'm going to show you close-up images of those as close as I can get so that you maybe you can help me determine whether it is what I think it is. It's not mine. It was lent to me by a, 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 a collector who suspects it might be a Nazi gun, too. These guns were designed initially by John Moses Browning, in part because he passed away before it was done, unfortunately. And John Browning was arguably one of the finest, most prolific gun designers ever to grace us with his presence on this earth. And certainly he was a terrific salesman, so he was really good about selling his designs. Good grief. I could give you a list of the many, 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 many guns that Mr. Browning designed. And this was one of them. This was originally commissioned by the French military because they wanted a new sidearm, and they had a specific list of requirements, as militaries often do. Uh, they wanted the gun to be relatively compact. Now, if you pick up one by today's standards, when we're used to picking up polymer pistols, you'll say, wow, that thing's heavy. It's all metal, that's why. Uh, but for those standards at the time, it was fairly compact. And this is around 1914, 1920, right around in those days. So one was its compactness. They wanted that. The other was that military sidearms and semi-automatic sidearms in general had a relatively limited magazine capacity. They wanted something that, with a, that would hold at least 10 rounds. A magazine had to hold at least 10 rounds. And so uh, they designed this magazine, which holds, I think, 13. But 10 was the, limited, the, the, the limit as to how few it could hold for the design requirement for the French military. Will this one meet that requirement? Now, they also wanted it to have a magazine disconnect. That's where you take the, when you take the magazine out of the gun, you press the trigger and the hammer will not fall. That was a magazine disconnect. You probably have seen those with guns that come out to California and so on. They now require that. I've always hated those things, but nevertheless, that's something that the French military wanted incorporated into this new service pistol. They also wanted an external hammer, a manual safety, like the thumb safety that is on the gun. They wanted the gun to be pretty robust and strong. They wanted it to be easily field stripped so that it could be cleaned and maintained in the field. And it also had to be able to impact an enemy out to 50 yards with some authority. And so having it be a 380 or something like that was not going to be sufficient. So that meant the, really the, the design had to incorporate at minimum a 9mm type cartridge. Now as I mentioned, the French wanted a gun that was easily field stripped and this gun is about as simple to take apart as you're ever going to get. I, I marvel at the simplicity actually. You'll notice if you look that there is a little notch for the safety. And then it appears there's another little notch for the safety. So if I allow the slide to go forward, you can see if I engage the safety, there's a little thing that goes into that notch, kind of locks the slide in place at the same time, similar to a 1911 in that regard. And then if I retract the safety all the way to the rear and lock it in place with my slide stop, you'll notice there's another little notch for the safety right there. And if I press the slide back a little bit further, I can engage that. Now that is not so much for keeping the gun unsafe, as it is for positioning the gun to be field stripped for cleaning. If I then do this and turn the gun over, you will notice the other side of my slide stop, that little button sticking out there. Now all I have to do is press on that button. I have to align my slide stop up a little bit so it'll clear. Press the button and the slide stop pops right out. How about, how, how about that? That's about as easy as it gets. And then if I just put a little rearward pressure on the slide and disengage the safety, I can now slide the slide entirely off the pistol. How about that? That leaves me with the frame, the slide stop, and the slide, and the other two parts that are going to come out of there in order for me to clean the gun, which would be the guide rod and return spring and the barrel. And that's it. That's about what you got. Now, in order to put it back together, you just do it in the reverse. Put the barrel back in, get your 
guide rod and spring and replace those. Now you'll notice on the end of the guide rod, uh, there's this little hole. That's what the slide stop's gonna go through when it's all lined up. And you'll notice that the hole can be kind of down a little bit or up a little bit. You want it to be down so that when you put it back in the slide, it looks like that. If you reverse it, you'll see if I reverse it that you'll notice your slide is misaligned, or your uh, guide rod rather is misaligned. See how it's lined down like that? That's not what you want. So if you do that accidentally and you get one of these, you go, okay, well, I remember that because of that old bearded weirdo on Gun Guy TV and he showed me how to do it. So there anyway, that's how that goes. You want it to be lined up straight. Now, there's some little things in here that when you turn the slide this way, they tend to fall down. And so you'll try to get the slide on the frame and it won't want to go. And I'm not a gunsmith, so I can't give you all the technical terms like that. But what I have discovered is if you hold the slide upside down like this, and then you take the frame and you line the frame up and then slide the frame onto the gun this way, then you don't have to fight all of that resistance and you're not fighting with the pistol. The other thing you'll notice is if you lay the gun flat like this before you retract the slide further, again, those things don't pop up and get in your way. So if you lay it flat, retract the slide, and engage that safety in that notch, that now has positioned the pistol so that your slide stop will go right back in there. The little holes are already aligned. All you have to do is insert your slide stop and press it all the way through. And now you can disengage your safety. Your pistol is back together and working perfectly. Now obviously I got this gun and I raced down to the rainbow range so that I could shoot it because I really like the Browning High Power. I have always liked them and always wanted one. I don't have one, but if I ever get one, you can rest assured there will be a video about it. In the meantime, I shot this one quite a bit and I must express my gratitude to the collector who owns it who permitted me to take it to the range and shoot it. Some collectors don't want you to do that and this one allowed me to, and I'm very grateful. In any case, thank you very much for watching my channel. I'm really grateful that you do. Please continue to do so, and let other people know about us. We're having a lot of fun doing this, and I hope you're enjoying the videos as we produce them. If you haven't already, I'm going to ask you to please join the National Rifle Association. If you're watching gun videos, you obviously like guns, and if you're not a member of the NRA, you need to be. So I'm going to put a link in the description that will take you to a special spot on our website where you can join the NRA. It will save you some money and you can join the NRA for less than the cost of one box of ammunition for a year's membership. Donald Trump may have gotten elected, but that does not mean that our NRA uh, dues should just stop. It certainly does not mean that the Second Amendment is safe. It is not. It is a continual battle. And until we've gotten a lot more court uh, uh, wins and a Supreme Court justices that are supportive of the Second Amendment and we've changed the laws across the country, the fight will continue to be fought. So please join. Now if you have a gun, whether it's an old one like this or a new one, and you might use it for self-defense or you carry a gun like I do every day, there may come a time when you have to use that thing. And if you do, no matter where you are in the country and no matter how right you were when you did what you did, there's a very good chance you might land in jail or be sued into oblivion. You're going to need legal help. For that, I use a company called Second Call Defense, and I want to urge you to check them out. I've got a link in the description so that you can check out Second Call Defense, and if you decide to sign up with them, I think you'll find you found an excellent service. They provide money to bail you out of jail. They provide money for an attorney to defend you. They've got a hotline 24 hours a day, seven days a week, where you can get an attorney on the phone to talk to the police. They do a lot of things like that. They'll help you out a lot, and you never have to pay that money back. That's my favorite part. I don't want to have to pay the money back. So check out Second Call Defense. The link is in the description. Thank you again for watching. Please like, subscribe. That's why we've got that thing right there for you to do that. Uh, check out our other videos and look for new ones. We produce new ones every week. Have a wonderful week and please be safe.